Hi, my name is Byun Eng. This is my uh, project on German communism, how ideological conflicts shape the socio-political landscape in interwar Germany. Just a quick introduction to my project. Um, my name is Byun Eng. As I said, my mentor was Benjamin Schaefer, um, and I'm from San Francisco, California. Um, so why did I choose this project? Basically, first, big history fan. Uh, I love World War II, so I wanted to do something related to that topic. And I figured out why not do something related to the start of World War II. Um, since com the communism side uh, of Germany is not really taught taught too much in school, it's mostly you know Treaty of Versailles, reparations taught in school. So I try to um, do something that I don't know too much about. That's why I chose this topic. Um, so establishing thesis and starting uh, research. So throughout my research, um, I established my thesis, which is basically saying that infighting, um, ideological division within G the German left was a big factor in why they didn't kind of stand up uh, to the rise of fascism and Adolf Hitler in Germany during this interwar period. Uh, two of my main sources that I used to kind of get background information on this subject was Creating German Communism by Eric Weitz and Assault on Democracy by Kurt Valen. So um, some starting background knowledge, uh, sort of the biggest event um, that started this all was the October Revolution in which Vladimir Lenin took power in Russia. This had two, two impacts. First of all, it instilled a fear in established elites in Europe that a communist revolution could happen in their country and they could lose power. So that, that was a big fear uh, for them. Second impact was that uh, communist cells across Europe believed, oh, since Lenin did it, we could do it. And therefore they tried to replicate Lenin's attempts at a takeover in Russia. So this did occur in Germany in 1919 um, in three kind of main centers, Berlin, Bremen, and Munich. These were very short-lived though, because the German government at the time sent soldiers in and brutally uh, rep repressed these, these communist takeover attempts. Um, this kind of shows that kind of shows that fear that leaders had of uh, a communist takeover in their country. And that's why they use such brutal measures to repress these takeover attempts. Uh, one thing to note about this kind of repression was that the leader of the German government at the time was a social democrat. So he wasn't uh, some right winger that really hated communism. He was a social democrat on the left. So it kind of shows how uh, differing the, uh, the ideas of the German left were at this time. And then uh, last piece of context, just during the interwar period, um, the Weimar Republic was just a mess. It was riddled with hyperinflation, instability, and, and unemployment. Um, the unemployed roamed the streets, um, kind of looting, doing whatever. Uh, and the German Communist Party actually kind of took advantage of this at the time, trying to use the unemployed uh, as a way to start a social revolution because the unemployed were always protesting, demonstrating. So the Communist Party always try to use them. Uh, and this represents kind of a difference between a traditional Communist Party and the German Communist Party at the time, because the German, because the German Communist Party utilized the unemployed while a traditional Communist Party would usually use, you know, the working class, the workforce that are in unions or something. So now that we have background information out of the way, we can move on to the foundations and sort of the start of uh, my research and my findings. Um, so at the turn of the century, uh, we had this um, fundamental debate in socialism. Edward Bernstein, the man on the left, publishes uh, the writing Evolutionary Socialism, where basically he kind of switches up on traditional Marxism, basically saying we don't need a social revolution anymore to reach a socialist utopia. We only need social reforms within the societies that already exist. 
this angers a lot of traditional Marxists like Rosa Luxemburg. And she basically says, she writes social reform or revolution where she refutes, she tries to refute everything that Burns says as she is a really pro-revolutionist, pro-military. And she's, she basically thinks that the only way to reach the socialist utopia is the inevitable fall of the capitalist society and then a social revolution of the proletariat. Um, so this is a fundamental debate that kind of shapes the landscape of German communism for the years to come. Since this was before the interwar period, all the events I've already talked about, I went and found a more modern example. Um, Frederick Ebert, the man on the left, uh, was the leader of the uh, Social Democratic Party um, in the beginning of the interwar period. And Karl Korsch, the man on the right, was another prominent uh, Marxist thinker. They, bro they both brought new ideas to the table, but uh, their baseline ideas is the same. Ebert, the man on the left, believed that with a stable government and good social reforms, society could eventually change and maybe they could reach the socialist utopia without a bloody revolution. Ebert, um, the basis of his thoughts was that, yes, you still need a social revolution to reach um, the socialist utopia. And then we can see from these two and we can see from Bernstein and Luxembourg this fundamental divide on, um, on the ideas of communists and if leaders like this are fighting so much ideologically, um, it's easy to assume that this is the this could be a main reason why the um, German Communist Party didn't really form a united front. And then we could obviously see that see that effect in the history books. In 1933, Hitler takes power. One year later, he eliminates or arrests all his political opponents, mostly communists. Um, and this is just really a culmination of the German left's failure to unite and kind of stand up to this fascist threat. Um, and I think from my research that this is because uh, there's too much infighting, too much ideological difference. And basically the communists, because of this, the communists uh, failed to unite and failed to stand up uh, to Hitler and his Nazi party and the Communist Party from here on out was destroyed until after World War II. Um, and that was that was it. So I think my paper was success. I found out what I was looking for. I learned a lot, a lot of new stuff. Um, and I really enjoyed this process. So thank you for listening to my presentation.